Alrighty, feels like forever since I've done a, another video and well, it's about time. It's been one of those really long stressful weeks as I have been learning from the ground up how to set up an industrial vacuum table CNC machine of which I have failed horribly so. As one of the owners have told me, which I think makes absolute sense and I really like this attitude, is that if you do not suffer, you do not learn, and boy oh boy, just like Studley Steve here, he never got those muscles without really doing the time. And boy oh boy, has it felt like I've been doing the time because I have been struggling. However, this is not about our woes, this is about transmission lines and tapered ratios. So if you've missed any videos up till now, and this is the first time you've seen these videos, I suggest you go find the very first episode of our Hornish tutorials and you go through from the beginning because it's going to help you learn up to where we are at the moment. So why would we want to taper a transmission line speaker? Well, let's kind of take a step back and have a look at some modeling, right? In our first video where we started to look at the layout of our cabinets, it was very quick to understand that when we are modeling a transmission line speaker, you can see here we are, we've got our driver that's just in the front face. Let me actually do this and go, right, there we go. We've now got a full cabinet view. We had essentially created one long cabinet. So if you were to imagine that this little section over here was one piece, well, that was a transmission line in its simplest format. We then created a fold within our transmission line. I had taken this driver and placed it on this front piece over here, which then became our baffle. And well, this was basically our port. Now I don't want to say port, but I know for the most part, a lot of people will relate to this because it's the opening where the air comes out. And uh, as some people in South Africa and Africa like to refer to this giant gaping hole in the speaker box as the breather. Now it's not a breather hole. It's really in our case, the terminus or the exit. Okay. So we had then folded that line again, which looks something like this. And we had the speaker roughly one third down this line. But for the most part, they were all the same thing. And I try to explain the differences between the boxes and the relationship between where the opening is to the actual driver itself, because well, that's going to affect the overall response of the system. Now, well, we basically kicking off from where we left off with two new types of looking cabs, which essentially is going from some large volume down to some really small volume or area, a large area down to a small area and a small area down to a large area. Now, if you can imagine that when the speaker is going backwards and forwards, it's creating these pressure waves within this chamber. And ultimately what is happening is, well, like all boxes, this is a resonant model, like all speaker boxes are resonant in some nature. And by setting up a ratio between this side and this side, ultimately we are affecting standing waves and the relationships behind resonances within that model. We could say that this particular box, for the most part, is in fact louder than this particular box. This particular box is kind of somewhere in between these two boxes in terms of its overall loudness for its given length and volume. But there is a resonance difference between them. Designing this type of enclosure where we are tapering off our cabinets is a little more complicated in nature, but for the most part, it is actually relatively easy. So what I've done to try and illustrate this ratio is I created a really simple sketch with Infusion 360. And what I've done, which I know is not perfect, but hopefully this is going to explain things a little bit to you. Our first box 
we basically have our driver one third of the line closer towards this bottom section over here in both instances. So if our depth of our cabinets is a total of 800 and I was to divide this by four, well, then we would have a relationship of three to one. If we were to do the same thing over here, using the depth of our box and also divide this by four, we are now going from a ratio of one to three. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Again, not necessarily perfect guys, but I'm trying to just illustrate this <laughs> to you in the simplest of ways. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how this looks like in horn rest. Now I'm going to start from the very beginning because yes, well, I want you to learn the menus. And there is something very, very important that we need to discuss here. We're gonna select our transmission line speaker. We are going to go normal. And we are gonna use two segments because if we look at this, there's segment one and segment two. Very straightforward. Segment one, segment two, segment one, segment two. Right, we don't have any other funny shapes that are going on in this box. Now, this is where things are going to get slightly different. If we have a look at our first box and we turn it directly to the side, you will see that not only are these two walls parallel to one another, but if we turn it this way around, right, and we were to look at the width here, we have more parallel walls. Now, I'm sure if you understand anything about resonance, you would really start to see the advantage here, is that we have less parallel walls in these two box designs versus this and the previous three boxes that we had generated for our transmission line theory. Now, knowing that, hopefully you've already caught on to the idea that we are going to be able to control not just the loudness of the box, but the overall resonance. In this particular instance, we would use a conical horn layout because we have parallel walls. However, because we have got this tapering ratio, we are no longer going to use conical. We are going to get better results by using parabolic because we have an expanding ratio. Okay, very important to remember. So if you were to imagine if we were to cut this box in half, you could kind of see this. Really, really simple. Okay, so now that we've done that and we've gone through this model again, what I'm going to do is again, take you around the long way. I'm gonna use the 18400 from Nexus because it wants a really big box. And to be honest with you, these boxes are ginormous. I think they're gonna work out to about 700 odd liters, maybe more, maybe less, who knows. Now, a nice way for you to orientate yourself around horn resp, especially when doing transmission lines, is to actually not necessarily go through this menu, but you can actually go through the design wizard, of which I'm going to do exactly that and show you how. Horn resp is now asking us, is our information correct around our driver? And for the most part, my answer is yes. So I'm duly going to go yes. And here we are this menu kind of looks familiar. Hopefully it looks familiar because then otherwise, again, you need to go back and watch the previous videos. Now, right now, we have a box ratio of one to one. It is very important to understand that one to one is exactly as it says, one to one. They are the same in ratio. If this is 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters, well, then our area is gonna be 40 times 40, giving us an area of 1600. It would be exactly the same over here. However, our tapered ratios is going to give us a slightly different answer. If we are, for example, let's say 80 centimeters here, then it would be eight by 40. Well, this is gonna be a very different area. Now, let's come here and try and understand how we are going to start creating this ratio. Firstly, I'm gonna take a step back and say that David has included a couple of really cool formats, which is different people's spins on this relationship between line length and box volume. 
And to be honest with you, depending on the driver, most of the times it's going to give you a relatively good result, depending on what you are chasing. And the way we're going to find these different formulas, right, or relationships, you can see if I highlight over here, it's going to go pink. And if I double click on that, it's going to take me to the next layout. Now for this particular layout, this method MJK 2021B, you can see Horn Recipe is generating an error. The driver QTS must be between 0.1 and 0.56. Well, our QTS is much higher than 0.56. In fact, it's very, very high. We have a low BL, high VAS, and well, relatively low XMAX driver that we are working with and our driver simply just doesn't work in this design. We can double click and go to another version of this. And as you keep on clicking, you're going to go round and round in circles and eventually you will find something that might look appealing to you as a start. It is always good to start off with some form of drawing and understanding as to what you want to do and then go in and plug it in manually. But as you are learning, this is a great way to start. Right, so how do we change this relationship in our usable bandwidth? Well, essentially, we need to come down over here. Right now, we are on a relationship of one, so we can think about one straight point. Notice we still are on usable bandwidth, but if I double click over here, oh, actually, we need to get out of Brian Steele's. Oh, I think it's Brian Steele. Brian, I don't know if it is you, Lacquer, if it's not you, sorry for you. <laughs> All right, let's go from here. Our, our driver's relationship, actually, I don't want to use this. Sorry, gentlemen, I want to go to something a little bit more. Shoot. There we go. Okay, so we are in this one-to-one -one relationship, and this is kind of what it's looking like. So how do we change this? Well, you can see if we come over this area over here, it's going to highlight. And if I double click on it, it's going to give me area expansion ratio. And if I double click on it again, area taper ratio. Mm. So one we can think of as tapering down and the other one is expanding up. Does that make sense? Tapering down and expanding up. Meaning that we can now change our ratio from one to two or from one to three or in our case, something more around one to four. In which case, you will notice what is happening with the resonances. See how this is much smoother when we go from a ratio of four to one versus a ratio of one to four. Yes, we have tuned lower in the one instance. Well, not really. In actuality, depending on your design format and the choices that you're gonna make, for the most part, gentlemen, when we are going to go from a ratio which is large to small, typically speaking, the overall loudness is going to become less. When we are working with an expanding ratio, we are going to generally make the low frequency side a little bit more efficient, but increase more resonance. Unlike our straight line, we now have the flexibility at hand to affect this relationship. For the most part, I like to taper downwards. So in other words, I like to do this format. Reason is, it gives me the ability to actually bump this driver's resonance up. Let's go to another mode, for example, and look on this over here. Now, we can assume that we are working with this model over here, but watch what happens to the resonance that is sitting up top here. As we start to change this ratio around, you can see that we are slanting and pushing our resonance mode further out, but we are trading off a little bit of bass. But if we were to flip this around, you will see that we've increased the overall efficiency going from a high pressure zone, which is a low amplitude zone, to a low pressure zone, high amplitude, and you can basically see that, right? Increasing that resonance. So for the most part, guys, you're going to have to fiddle around, throw in some damping material and have a bit of a play. But that's really all there is towards taping ratios. Lastly, the only thing that I could recommend is that when you build your boxes, try and do a bit of Googling on the advanced centerline method 
because ultimately it's going to change the length of your box by some. Now it becomes more prevalent if you're tuning higher up because that relationship becomes more you know to the millimeter but for big cabinets that you're tuning very very low well it can affect things but maybe by two or three hertz if you've done your design very very well where if you start to tune between 80 and 100 hertz somewhere up top there it can become far more noticeable so essentially that is some idea and concept behind a tapered ratio being from small to large or from large to small within transmission line theory if i've missed anything or you'd like to ask some questions just leave it in the comments and i will try and jump on that and help you a little bit further next up i think we are going to be taking a look still within transmission lines but we are going to start to look at mass loading or putting a port in our system because it becomes quite confusing for the most part because we can have this opening and still have a port within our box so for myself good night till the next one